Hey kids, the program you're about to listen to contains some adult situations, adult language, themes, and other adult topics. If you're easily offended, this show's not for you. Be sure to like and follow Crazy Truth on Swing Towns. Swing Towns has been around for 20 years, so they're an established, well-known site with lots of users. So you'll be able to easily find people you're interested in. And unlike other big sites, on Swing Towns, you don't have to worry about being bombarded with messages from people you're not interested in. Because only people you're interested in can message you. And the best part is, you can message those people for free on Swing Towns. Hey, you crazy motherfuckers. Welcome back to another edition of Crazy Truth. This is episode number eight. We're so excited to be here. Uh, I am your host with the most, Cole, with the lovely Miss Amanda. Hey. Looky there. Here we go. We are ready to go. Hope you are, too. we got all kinds of exciting things to talk about. We're going to take your questions tonight, and we've got some good ones. Uh, we've actually do uh, going to do a little bit different tonight, and I'll explain that in just a second. But we're going to start the show the way we always start the show. That's right. Uh, we're going to start with some, from some sex news, because that's the way we roll. So, all right, kids, get out uh, your wallets. Get ready for the, uh, uh, the the latest, greatest high-end sex toys. That's right. There's a new company out. It is called Mystery Vibe. This is three engineers that have taken the leap to get into the sex business and the toy business because kind of like building the better mousetrap, they believe they could build a better vibrator. Now, that's pretty damn exciting. So uh, they actually released a vibrator uh, a little while back. It's called the Crescendo for Women. And the big thing with this vibrator was that it actually took and it bends in over a hundred different positions. So you can curve the vibrator to the person's body. Okay. So that's pretty damn exciting right off the bat. That's what we need. So you can bend it all the way around. You can make it however you want to, to fit everything you need to make it fit. Now, that's not the exciting part. What's exciting is uh, they have come out or they're getting ready to release uh, what is called the Tenuto, uh, and this is a male vibrator. There we go, a male vibrator. So what this does is it takes and it wraps around your penis, and it's got a total of six vibrators in this. So the goal is, as they put it themselves, it's going to provide you a longer, harder, more intense sexual experience than anything you've ever had. So what's really cool with that is, is that it is supposed, it's designed so both the guy is going to get off with it and also the girl is going to get off with it. Now, before you go, oh yeah, great, another sex story, wow, neat, whatever. These guys took and uh, they went to a tech show and they were from newest design they actually beat out the Apple Watch. They picked up an additional 1.5 million pounds of funding. The investors right now, have they've raised over $13 million uh, in capital for this company. So get ready, get watching. Their whole thing is to provide a high-end, a high-end vil- vildo? A vildo? What the fuck's a vildo? <laughs> God, it's going to be a good show. A high-end vibrator for... Uh, for men, and it's going to be released this fall. So now, unlike the sex toy we talked about last week, that was the sex doll that was designed to crush your ego. This I might want. This is this this can go on my wish list, my Christmas wish list. I want the vibrator ring around my dick. But it's the whole shaft, right? Well, I mean, I, they didn't have any pictures. They didn't show if it was like if it was like a sleeve. <laughs> it's is a it ch- like a cock ring that vibrates, or are we I, talking like a whole sleeve along? I don't the whole? think it's a whole sleeve. They didn't have pictures. They did say pre-orders are available. I could not find where the, to to do a pre-order or how much they're going to cost. Uh, so I didn't know if it's the whole sleeve. I'm going to do more research on this because here's the thing: if it's the whole sleeve, is it shaped like a hand? The fingers bend around because then that would be like visually. Uh, you know, hot and as well as this is visually hot, as well as, as you know, shaking your dick hot. It can't be the whole sleeve because it's supposed to be for you and your partner. So if, if I'm wearing this and we're having sex, you're going to get vibrated while I'm getting vibrated. So then it wouldn't be a hand. It probably wouldn't, unless it's a really small, small, tiny hand. Little, little, little fingers. A thin one. <laughs> little bitty fingers. How neat. Dwarf fingers. Hey, that'd be all right to make my dick look bigger. 
<laughs> Wait a minute. See, I think I see another marketing thing here with that. All right, so make sure you put that on my wish list. Anybody out there, what do you get the host with the most? You get them a vibrator for their penis. Well, that'll be fun at Thanksgiving to go through the Christmas list with mom and dad. All right, anyways, <laughs> so moving right along. All right, so tonight we're going to do something a little bit different uh, today, whatever, now on this show, in that normally uh, we always answer questions from our viewers, and we're going to continue to do that. Now, what's cool is <clears throat> we actually got a whole bunch of questions. We actually have three questions they all kind of relate to each other uh, from three different people. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change we're gonna change up the game a little bit. That's the way we roll around here. We're gonna get unique, crazy, wild, and we're gonna we're gonna answer all three of these questions and how they tie in. All right. Are you ready? Sure. What what could possibly go fucking wrong? <laughs> all right. So it's you and I. What <laughs> can go wrong? <laughs> so all right. So we're gonna start off with this is from uh, a listener. They asked to remain anonymous. Uh, they are a relatively new couple in the lifestyle, okay? All right. So they're new. They've been listening. They, they feel like they learned a lot, so they're turning to us as the possible experts. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Here we go. All right, so their question is, is uh, to understand better the importance of understanding each other's rules and then properly interpretation of the boundaries and what to do together after a rule has been broken. Now, that's just one. That's just one of the three. Okay. 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 So, so we've talked about this before a little bit. Communication, 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 communication. Right. If, mm -hmm. if you can't communicate in this lifestyle, you are fucked, and not in the good way. You are absolutely. I think you go both ways, but then you'll end up getting really screwed <laughs> in the long run. It's gonna be a good fuck turned to a bad fuck. It's weird how that works. So, okay. When you when you talk about the importance of understanding each other's rules, okay, the rules. Here's the deal. You have to, there can be no gray area in the lifestyle. No. Right. Okay. We, we've tried that. How'd that work Mistakes out? Mistakes happen. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was definitely, yeah, it was, it was definitely a mistake. Okay, here's the thing. You're not going to know every rule you need to have when you first start. No. Okay. So rules are kind of like anything else. It's like a, a living, breathing, constantly changing, constantly adapting thing. You have to understand that you're never going to necessarily have the exact same rules. We don't have the same rules today that we did eight years ago when we first started. No. Because if I tried to pull some of the shit or you tried to pull some of the shit uh, <laughs> eight years ago that we do today. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, that was, <laughs> that was not going to be, that is not the way they're going to go. We mm. can even talk about that from, from Saturday. A little bit. Remember what happened Saturday? Well, you weren't there. You didn't get to see. I told you about it, though. Like getting mauled coming out of the bathroom. Oh, Randomly yeah. just making out with a girl that came out. I, I, well, I was going to go into the bathroom. She was coming out of the bathroom. That wouldn't have faced me eight years ago. Oh, the hell it wouldn't have. No, no. Are you okay? <laughs> Wait a minute. See, this is going to be a long one. Because when I, you're telling me that it would not have even vaguely bothered you eight years ago if I had just come and said, this random girl just started making out with me. Or that, well, that I started making out back. Mm -mm. Damn it, we should have went through the rules better eight years ago. Oh, <laughs> shit. Okay, so, well, for some people, though, some couples, that would be a big thing. When you're new, if all of a sudden I go to the bathroom and then I don't come back for like, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, just to go pee. You're, you, some couples, it's going to be like, what's going on? And, and for some couples, they're going to pop around that corner and all of a sudden, there's your partner making out with somebody. And that's against the rules. You weren't gone that long. Well, well, yeah, but I mean, well, the band was really good, so that's why. <laughs> I've made out with her before. It's not a big deal. Yeah. So, but still, the thing is, so you you have to understand your rules and boundaries are going to continue to change. So you have to be willing and ready to let them change. You can't be so set that it's like these are set in concrete. These are never going to change because as you get more familiar with the lifestyle, this shit's going to change. There's no way around it. Mm -hmm. So. But when you're deciding upon the rules, the thing is, it takes time and discussion. I mean, you have to have a pretty solid set of basic rules before you go to your first event. Yes. Because we did. I mean, we didn't know what to expect. When you're new, you don't. Well, it's, okay, so it, what were our rules when we first started? We didn't really have one for the first meet and greet. The first meet and greet, we just were like... What are we going to do if everybody gets naked and starts fucking? I mean, I didn't know. <laughs> but we just did not happen. But, no. <laughs> but after that, I mean, as the rules were kind of, we kind of played them by ear as we went. Mm -hmm. Really. Which, which I don't know if that's necessarily 
the best way to do it. But we didn't dabble our toes in the lifestyle either. No. We went we went all in. Our first hookup was we were like, we're gonna full swap. Either do it or don't. No middle ground. But if, if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna take and dabble your toes a little bit. I don't know, that's right. But anyways, dip your toes, dabble your finger, whatever the fuck you're gonna do. You're just gonna try it a little bit. You need to sit down and you need to understand, hey, is kissing okay? Mm-hmm. For some couples, kissing is not okay at all. All right, whatever. I don't know how that works out, but sure. But, you know, kissing, is that okay? Does the other person have to be present? Do you have to go get permission first? Do the, you have to go through all those basics. And the, the thing is, is that if when you're sitting down with the rules, if you can't talk honestly with your spouse or your significant other when you're setting the rules, that's the first red fucking flag that you should not be in the lifestyle. I mean, because here's the thing. You have to be able... You have to be able to to say, I want to do this. Is this okay? Mm -hmm. And you have to be okay with them turning around and saying, no, no, that's not okay. And vice versa. So first, when you go through the rules, you set the rules. It's up to each of you to make damn sure that you're actually, you're clear. I mean, number one, this isn't as hard. You shouldn't, I mean, kissing is allowed or it's not. Mm -hmm. This is like a yes or no thing. If you get confused on that. Again, this probably is the lifestyle is not for you. I can't even. What would be a rule that people could get confused on that could be gray area? I don't even know. Maybe if, if somebody, if they're in the room, or you got to know them first, or I, I don't even know. I can't even think of one right off the top of my head that would be like an easily to be gray area. But let's just say you find one for somehow, some way. I don't know. It's, it's, you have to, you have to get permission first. There you go. We'll do that one. You have to get permission first. If you don't know exactly what you have to get permission to do, mm-hmm. you need to ask, you need to clarify before you go in, because the worst time to realize, to clarify a rule is after it's been broken, because mm-hmm. at that point in time, you're not clarifying a rule. You're covering your ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you're, or begging for forgiveness. Right. Okay. So. Make your make your rules, set them up, make sure you understand. There's nothing wrong with writing down your rules. No. I mean, realistically, you don't need to have so many fucking rules that it's a book. Remember, this is not an employee manual, okay? So you don't, you know, you need to have your basic rule. Oh, that looks, <laughs> that looks, that looks says you don't agree with that. Do you think? No, no. I Well, I don't know if it necessarily has to be written down. I mean, if you're confused, <laughs> maybe, but... I don't think it has to be written down. You just, it's just things that you talk about that you're okay with or you're not okay with. Do you think there can be too many rules? Yes. Sometimes I think you can overthink it. Absolutely. Okay. So good. We're on the same page with that. Basic rules. Mm -hmm. Because you might go, well, I'm not okay with X. And then when it happens, you go, okay, that wasn't so bad. Okay. You can do that. That's true. Well, and let's face it. Some rules, like we're going to a meet and greet. Now that you've listened to our podcast and you know what meet and greets are, and you know they're not turning into wild orgy, you probably don't need to have a rule about anal sex right off the bat. No. We know <laughs> anal sex. Mm, okay, great. So the first thing I do when I walk up, I should not fist somebody. Gotcha. Okay, I'm down with that. Some rules you don't necessarily need to have. You don't need to have that until maybe for separate parties, separate occasions. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there, there, there's no such thing as there's no such thing as too much discussion about the rules, though. No. I you mean, can keep having talks about it, yeah. Yeah, you need, you need to have as many talks and as many discussions about the rules until everybody's 100% sure. Because here's the reality of it. The rules can change like two minutes before you get out of the car to go to the event. Mm-hmm. And, and you have to remember that if the rules change at that point in time, if somebody, if, if all of a sudden I go, well, by the way, Nobody can touch your nipples, like through your shirt, whatever. Or nobody can grab your ass. There you go. That'd be better. Well, not that everybody's gonna be groping around, but just saying, you got a nice badonka donk. Anyway, so you just say, I say, Austin, there's nobody. You you can't have people grabbing your ass. As the partner, you have a responsibility to a either finish talking about it if you don't agree or agree and go with it. Just because it was a last second add on doesn't mean that you don't have to. It doesn't count. Mm-hmm. Right. So especially your first couple of times, you've got to know the rules might change because your comfort level. Look, when you're sitting at your kitchen table talking about what you're OK with and what you're not is a far fucking cry from what you're going to be OK with and what you're not when you're standing at the bar with a cocktail in your hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? As a guy, you can be OK with all kinds of shit. You can say, oh, I don't care if somebody slaps your ass. 
Wait till the first time you're in a bar and somebody slaps your ass. Then you'll know whether or not you're truly okay with you. how that's a rule because it's not like you have control over that. N- no. A lot of times. No, but you have a rule when like, you're sticking your ass out there. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a rule about if she goes, is that all you got? <sighs> that you just let it slide and go, well, it's on you. That might happen. That's a story for a different show. Anyway, so, okay, so you once you have clear rules, and that's okay. So you have the clear rules. You've made sure everybody understands them right. Now, the, here's the thing. Here's why you cannot have too much discussion about the rules. It is not fair for either party to come back after the event and say, you didn't listen to the rules the right way. You didn't understand the rules. You should have that all worked out ahead of time. Mm-hmm. I do not buy, I mean, I don't know. Do you buy into the fact that that just because I didn't like it when I saw it, that means that you broke the rule? No. No. So it, it, there's no way. It may mean you changed the rule, mm-hmm. but you cannot be pissed. You cannot be pissed if the rule was you were okay with, ki- with, with kissing, and that's not a problem, and then all of a sudden we get to the bar, and I look over, and the next thing I know, this dude's got his tongue halfway down your throat, I can't be pissed at you going, you know, you broke the rule. No, you didn't break the rule. We said we were okay with kissing. Mm -hmm. Now, that may change now. So there has to be honest discussion about that. See, this is all shit that's red flags. If you don't don't have these discussions well ahead of time, this shit's going to be red flagged. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's something you're going to know. So once you've got, you've went through it, and the rules are all good. Okay? We've went to the event, and, and probably more... You're not going to break a lot of rules initially. I think most people, when they're new, don't break rules. Mm -mm. They're scared. I mean, pretty much, we were, like, attached the first couple ones. You didn't venture too fucking far away from me, and I didn't venture too fucking far away from you. Do I now? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you do. We do more now, but at the time, we were pretty much, like... You know, we were like Hansel and Gretel going through the forest. We were holding each other's hands and, and leaving breadcrumbs on how the fuck to get out of there in case <laughs> shit went south. Okay? We, well, we didn't know. I mean, I didn't know. The first one, we were in the car. We didn't know if it was going to turn on an orgy, let alone if you went to the bathroom. Next thing you know, you are going to be like, gangbang. We didn't have any fucking clue what was going Because no on. one told us what a mean greet was. <laughs> no, no shit. <laughs> Weird how that works. So, I, you know, so the first time it's not going to be. Where the rules come into being... I think in a big issue is the first time you go to like a house party, mm-hmm. the first time you go to a hotel party, uh, the world famous bone stock, some of, you know, some of those different events like that, that's where you're going to have the possibility of breaking of the rules. Like actual where there's going to be or a good potential to be sex. And I, I think that you have to totally, I think you have to totally, you have to look at your basic rules at that point in time. And you have to ad- adjust them and adapt them to uh, what's going on when you're actually having sex. Because the reality is, at that point in time, it's a whole new world, okay? You can go to... I don't care if you go to fucking meet and greets for seven years. And that's all you do. The, you will not be prepared and ready for the first time you look over and your spouse is getting the shit fucked out of them. You just won't be. It, it does not work that way. Because you're going to look over and you're going, like, that's hot. But that's my old lady. But that's hot. But that's my old lady. And then she's going to sneeze and you're like, what the fuck was that? And then shit gets weird. We've <laughs> talked about that. So uh, you have to understand. So when you go into a situation where there's absolutely going to be sex, mm-hmm. you need to sit down and have a very serious, it's hard to believe we don't do very much shit serious. No. <laughs> I mean, we're always fucking around. But we had a pretty serious when it came to, like, time for fucking. Because it was, like, the first time that we were going to an event that there was going to be multiple people, multiple mm-hmm. rooms and areas. You need to have it clear, clearly understood. Is it okay? Is it going to be same room? Is it going to be soft swap? Is it going to be full swap? Uh, here's the deal. You want to talk about something that will piss your spouse off? Let them think that you're going in and it's going to be soft swap. And the next thing you know... You know, she's sucking the guy's dick because that's soft swap, and you're banging the girl. Somewhere there, the lines got crossed. Somewhere someone's <laughs> rules were broken. Yes, and at that point in time, that is when freakouts occur. So you, you need to make sure that you have real set, you know, what you're going to do, or a pretty good, damn good idea. That is not the place or the time for rules to change. No. That is, how many times? In the moment, we, no. How many times have we seen that? I mean, we, we've seen that at multiple events. Yeah, a few. 
here's how you can, for those of you who haven't seen this before, here's how you can tell when a couple's rules have been broken at an event causing sex. There is usually yelling. <laughs> there is usually tears. There's usually doors slamming. Uh, mother You're trying to stop f- fist fights. <laughs> possible fist fights. People calling up people motherfuckers and people running out of said building. Mm-hmm. That is a pretty good indication that shit has went somewhere south along the line. So, no, you 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 need to have those rules and you don't break. You don't alter the rules when it's actual playtime. That is just a bad idea. And no, let's put it clearly out there. Booze is not an excuse. Oh, I was so drunk. I wouldn't have done it normally. No, it doesn't work that way. At all. <laughs> you didn't, we have not done anything on booze that we weren't pretty much okay with at a time. No, okay with, but yeah. We might have executed, <laughs> we might have executed it a little bit differently. Okay, but we were still okay with it. It was, it's not like all of a sudden, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't even... You know, next thing I know, you know, we were all drunk and you were getting gang banged. Yay! Hey, no, it wasn't like that. I mean, it was all stuff we'd already talked about. We were okay with. It's just the execution was different. <laughs> I'll agree. <laughs> so, so the thing is, okay. So you want to make sure you you have the rules, and you do need to have those rules. Are you okay? Does it need to be same room? Does it need to be soft swap, hard swap, or full swap? What are the limitations? You need to have that spelled out. If you go into an event and you don't have that spelled out. You are asking for disaster. I know one time initially we were same room only. And there was one time that y'all got kicked out of the room for laughing and stuff. <laughs> okay, yes. But, that, I, but we were okay with that. <coughs> but we knew. <laughs> we knew them. Okay, but you, you have to understand. Now, one, remember there was a near-death experience involved. <laughs> okay, quick story time. All right. So we were getting ready to hook up with a couple. We'd hooked up with them before. So we we knew them. We had a little bit of history yeah, with we them. we did. A lot of trust there. Uh, and there was a sex swing involved. And so they had like a bunch of, a, a room in there, not a dungeon, but a room in their basement. That's where they had like a sex swing and some things like that set up. Well, they didn't leave it set up all the time. There were two hooks hung up on the ceiling. Okay. One hook was for the sex swing. One hook was not. The husband uh, hooked the sex swing to the wrong to the wrong hook, and we'd all been out the bar, and we were all whatever. And that was the first time you were tied up to the wall, blindfolded. Yep, and and so you were you were experimenting a little bit with the BDSM, and this is my first time using a sex swing, and so her and I are going at it, and all of a sudden, the fucking hook gave way, and I'm telling you what, you have not seen a penis go soft so fast as when the hook goes just breaks her head slams into a cement wall and she falls into a bucket <laughs> and i was like oh, oh my god and and you know when little those of you that have little kids you know like when a little kid they're like their body's shaking but you don't know if they're laughing or crying and there's no sound and there's no sound <laughs> That's what she was doing. I'm just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, is she dead? And and she was laughing, but I, we almost had like an emergency room. I don't know. I couldn't see. I was blindfolded. Yeah, yeah. And and, and Miss Amanda's going, what's going on? What's going on? Is everybody okay? We didn't even bother to untie. We didn't even bother to untie her until after we made sure everything was okay. So we we uh, yeah. So after that, we decided we needed another beer. And, uh, which, which we did have another beer and then her and I were, we were a little drunk. We were, we were a little drunk and a little giggly. So when we all went upstairs, we decided no more sex in the room with the cinder block walls, uh, for safety, for safety sakes only. When we went upstairs, we were a little giggly and we were just trying to lighten the mood and we kept cracking jokes and we were disrupting because we were throwing off the pattern. And that was, that was, you both, you and him both told the same time to get the fuck out. <laughs> Get out, get out. And so, which we continued to laugh. We went out and had sex in the living room. Uh, we were allowed back in. Yeah. We were allowed back in. And we started cracking jokes again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much. We're good that way. God, I swear to God, I thought she died. I'll never forget that sound. Thunk, thunk. That was the sound of her head and then into the bucket. She went right into the bucket where they kept the sex going. But at least it didn't completely kill the moment. God, thank God. When there was no trip to the emergency room, hallelujah. Uh, but yeah, that was. We still laugh about that. We still laugh about mm-hmm. that today. This that was that was like what? God, that had been seven years ago. 
Summer, yeah. yeah, that was a long time ago. That's still one of the things we still have about that today. All right, so <laughs> how can you forget it? <laughs> no shit. I know that has nothing to do with rules at all. Well, Just it saying. did. It did because we kicked y'all out of the room, and that's not something we ever did, right? Or discussed for that matter. Well, and but even you being tied up, we hadn't discussed that ahead of time. We hadn't. No, but there was trust. Uh, there. But there was trust there, and so it was one of those things that was like, okay, yeah, we're good. Yeah. No worries. So, but again, that was somebody we were more experienced with. So, as a general, <laughs> see, here's one of those shows: do as we say, not as we do. <laughs> don't change the rules. Don't change the rules as you're actually as you're actually doing stuff. Uh, okay, so let's say the rules got broken. I mean, we we've had that happen. We've we've had that happen. We've mm-hmm. instigated new rules because of because of confusion. Mm-hmm. Right. So mm-hmm. we were at the we were at a party and. Uh, you were involved with a guy, I was involved with a gal, and the guy invited you. We were pretty new, still invited you back to their camper, and you and 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 you specifically told me you told me you were going, but I was really focused and I didn't hear you. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, I was finishing up here and I turned around and all I see was you guys headed off to the camper, and so guess who got all kinds of of like upset and and like like all fucked up about it and that was me right Mm -hmm. so uh i remember because then i paced around outside the camera beside me if i could come in or not finally i'm like i was just i was like livid and i was like uh do you mind if i come in and fucking watch i was kind of a dick about it too yeah you were (laughs) i I was pretty pissed i was pretty pissed but because of that we changed our rule so Mm -hmm. now we have a rule we have the touch rule so if if i want your attention i want to tell you something that's important involved fucking or going to have playtime or whatever you want to say, we literally have to walk up, touch the other person. This way we know that they, we have their attention and tell them what's going on. Mm -hmm. So even all these years, our rules continue to evolve and change, right? Yes. Okay. So the the next part of that question though is what do you do after a rule has been broken? We talk about it. We talk about it. Okay. (laughs) No, let's, let's, (laughs) No, that's what we're supposed to do. We didn't always talk about shit calmly and and, and adultly when when I don't if I remember it on the way home from that event where that happened, uh, we did not. I don't know if it was talking. It was talking with vigor and enthusiasm. Well, it started off with the silent treatment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kind of quiet for the first little bit, and then it got it crescendoed. And got kind of loud, mm-hmm. like real loud. Yeah. Okay. So, again, do as we say, not as we've done. Yelling and screaming is not. A, it's not. No. Because here's the thing, it was an accident. As a general rule, when people break rules, it's an accident. I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why. I, it, look, if somebody's going out specifically trying to break the rules, that's a whole different ball game. Okay, I think 99% of the time, a rule is broken. Somebody, you know, they made an assumption, and we know what making an assumption does. makes an ass out of me and you. You know, so they made an assumption, and they do something along those lines, and that's how a rule gets broken. So mm-hmm. after a rule get broken, and, and they have a great part with this. Number one, it is you have to work through it together. Right. There, you cannot put it off. Okay, if a rule is broken, no, I don't think busting through the door and being like blah, 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 <laughs> is the correct answer. Okay, but as soon as it's over, when you guys leave the event, which after a rule is broken, I don't care what stage the event is. I don't care if it's early in the event. I don't care if it's midway or if it's the end. I personally believe you have a responsibility as a couple to get the fuck out. Mm-hmm. Okay, because if you sit around and wait, everybody else is going to sense your attention. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's, I don't care if it's a hotel party. I don't care if it's a house party. People are going to sense that. So, so once a rule has been broken, if you hang out in there and keep chatting and keep like, partying, like, woo, nothing's going on, another fucking rule is going to get broken. Mm-hmm. And another one. Then what's going to start happening, then you've got revenge fucks happening. And, then, and that's when shit really takes a turn. And you do not have the, the, res- the right... To take and uh, you you don't have the right to take and involve innocent bystanders. No. Okay, because the person that you went and broke the rule with, it's not their fault that you broke your rule. 
Okay, it's not it's not your fault with that at all. So, uh, so you know you want to keep that in mind. So you need to you need to take and leave at that point in time. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be that's gonna be a key. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want to take a quick second here because boy, we're we're running right through time. So I want to take a quick second here, a quick break, uh, and give a shout out to the sponsor of the second half of our show, and the American Dream Half Concert Hall Half Gentlemen's Club. One hell of a party with live music every Thursday through Saturday and adult entertainment every night. Never a cover, but always a great time. The American Dream, 7402 F Street in Omaha, Nebraska. Okay, back to what we were talking about. Okay, so once you have taken, you, you have a responsibility to take and leave and, and, and get out. Mm-hmm. You need to start talking immediately. You need to go. You need to go home, or go somewhere, and you need to start hashing it out, and talk about it, and why did it happen, and your feelings. Because the one thing's for sure: if you wait till the next day, if you wait till the next day, if you wait until a couple of days later, or something along those lines, guess what's going to happen? It's going to fester. It's going to fester, and you know what a big old nasty pus ridden sore looks like you that's what it's going to be and you're going to be spewing that shit out when when <laughs> i think you didn't like that reference hell no <laughs> gross well that's what it is no. then, it, then it's not a discussion it comes out as complete anger you're not going to solve anything unless you talk you have to communicate and the thing is i personally believe you need to not go to another lifestyle event until you get your shit worked out. Yeah. I mean, you just have to. You have to take, if it takes two weeks to work it out, if it takes two months to work it out, if it takes two days to work it out, whatever it takes, you have to work it out because otherwise it's going to spill over. Mm-hmm. And and you have to make sure that it's completely and totally worked all the way through before you do that. I mean, that's just absolutely imperative. Does that make sense? I don't know. It works for us. That's the way we roll. Okay, so this kind of leads right into our next question. Uh, And this comes from Ben. And he asks, transparency in communication. Do you keep your communications private from your spouse or share it? And what he means by that, what that question means is, like texts, private messages on Facebook, communication that you have with either another individual, another couple, all the way across the board. I'm going to defer that to you. You get more messages than I do. You're way more popular than I am. Oh, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> no, no, no. You do. <laughs> no, I don't. You can't prove it. You haven't seen shit. Do I personally? <laughs> do I personally go? Oh my gosh! Someone so just text me. You want to hear what I said? Yeah. No. I don't do that. No. Um, is my phone open? Do you know the passwords and everything else to go looking at it? Absolutely, yeah, you do. Absolutely. I have nothing to hide. You want to look at it? Look at it. Right, right. Am I going to go out of my way to tell you about it? Or, you know, Not unless, unless it was it funny. Was, unless it was something good or I thought you should know about it. That's the only time you're going to hear about it. And, well, and that's why I'm with you. I mean, on the phone that you know about. The one I keep in the car is totally different. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, I, no we, we know each other's passwords. Mm-hmm. We sit here and, and 90% of the time when we're communicating with people, we're like, sitting next to each other when we're texting people. <laughs> so, I mean, that in and of itself is, is like a, a big non, a non-issue. I think that when you start hiding stuff, mm-hmm. which, which in our world, okay, for our communication, it doesn't have to be, hey, guess what? I just got a text from this person. I, we're not like that. We're past that point in, in our relationship. So, mm-hmm. it, it, but especially when you're new, there is... Nothing looks more guilty than when you hide the fact that you communicated with somebody. When you hide the fact that you texted somebody or that somebody was texting you. Mm-hmm. I, instantly, it, it, it just it looks guilty. And again, it, it, if you're comfortable with the fact that, hey, I get text messages. And of course, we're in a little bit different story with the page and with the, the podcast and whatever else. Do, I do get a ton a day. 
you get a lot. You get a lot of text messages a day. Instant messages. You get a lot of instant. Well, fuck you. You get a lot of instant messages. I do not. We put a fucking post on the page today that fucking asks how many people jack off thinking about me versus you, Miss Amanda. And I believe that at the last count, it was like twenty-seven to three, your favor. And most of those fucking guys text you. They no, want. they don't. No, 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 no. They do not. And I was trying to prove a point that there's girls that think about you too. Jesus. I lost it. I'm sorry. God. I, okay, so you, you, don't get a, you don't get a ton, but you do you get do you some. Do see? I look through your phone when you go to the bathroom. It's all good. <laughs> no, it, the thing is, you actually... We generally do tell each other, even when it's just, oh, hey, by the way, I got a text from whatever. Hey, I got a private message from whoever. I mean, I do. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's like stupid page crap that nobody cares about. Well, even then I do generally. I mean, you do too. I eventually hear about it, yeah. <laughs> the, oh, shit. <laughs> the thing is, is that, yes, you need to have transparency. It's not that you have to, that you have to show every single person that every text, but it's more just knowing it's just acknowledgement that it's going on. Yeah. At least for us. I mean, every couple is different. Look, I know there are some couples that when they play alone, when they come home, the other, the other significant other doesn't want to know a fucking thing. They're going to ask, did you have fun? Yes or no. That's all they want to know. Mm-hmm. That's it. For me, if you play alone, I want details play by play. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't undo the shirt button and then the shirt button, and then the shirt button, <laughs> And then we had a cocktail, and then we had dinner. Oh, wait, that's a date. Sorry, my bad. Anyway, so the different topic. So, but, you know, I, I want play-by-play. You're kind of in the middle. I mean, you've been that way with me. There's times I want plays-by-plays, but there's times... Mm. Yeah, it just, it just kind of varies. So for us, it's not, it's not a big deal. So if you're a couple that, that part of your kink is that you don't know anything about... You don't want to know anything about it. That's fine. As long as that is predetermined by you together. Mm -hmm. See, see, here's the overall thing. And this is the theme, I think, of the show. is like, really, when you're talking about couples, obviously, if you're a single, single female, single male, none of this fucking applies to you. Because you're single, you don't have to answer anybody. Let your pets know what you're doing. Hey, Fido, I'm going to go fuck a girl. Talk to you later. Okay, (laughs) nobody... Okay, you don't have that. But for couples out there, or people that are playing as couples, because motherfucker, I don't care if you've got a ring on it or not. If you're playing as a couple, couple rules apply. Mm -hmm. Okay? The thing is, is that you have to take, and you everything has to be decided ahead of time. It's, It's a mutual communication sort of situation. The reality of it is... Is that we have helicopters? The reality of it is, is that uh, if if you know something and I don't know it, you know how I'm going to react. You know that if you don't, if you leave out a pertinent piece of information, like, hey, I went to lunch today and I happened to see blah at lunch and I sucked his dick, and you don't tell me now that hasn't happened, I don't think, and you don't tell me that, okay, and I find out like later when they come to tell me thank you. That, you know, that all of a sudden I go, hey, by the way, thanks for letting me, you know, get my dick sucked at lunch. I'm probably going to lose my shit. Right? Mm-hmm. Just like you would, like, I know that if all of a sudden I was like, you know, hey, went to Omaha to help with a doctor's appointment. By the way, I fucked a girl. <laughs> and I didn't tell you and you found it later. You're going to lose your shit. Mm-hmm. Right? So you know how this shit works as a couple. You know what are the things that are going to, that your partner is going to feel are a violation of trust. Mm-hmm. So you have to establish it ahead of time. If you make the assumption, well, they should be okay with it, well, no, that's being selfish. Mm-hmm. There, there is no being okay. You can't assume to be okay with anything. You need to communicate. Once it's laid out there and the ground rules are laid out there, do you think it's the responsibility, like you know, a state of the union, that every so often I have to come back and go, so you okay with all the rules or should we change anything? No, they just change as you go. They change as you go. I agree. Sometimes it's by things that happen, and you go, um, no, I'm not okay with that. <laughs> hey, next time you're going to suck dick at lunch, let me know. <laughs> they got nowhere. Hey, next time you're going to go home for a doctor's appointment, you're going to get laid, let me know. Yeah, no, I mean, most of it's, it doesn't have to be a constant, like, you know, poke, 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 poke. But 
you know the hot button. So get it lined up, get it ahead of time. Now, if all of a sudden you're starting to not feel comfortable with the rule that was set up, if you if we had a rule that every time I went to Omaha to help with a doctor's appointment, I could go have sex with somebody. We can put that rule in at any point in time if you want to. I'm kind of waiting for a pause there. Throwing her out there. Fishing. Checking. Okay. Uh, but if we had that rule and you were getting to feel like that I was sure had to help with a lot of doctor's appointments. <laughs> Motherfucker, you know a lot of sick people. Uh, and you feel uncomfortable with it. I believe it's your responsibility then to say, Cole, oh, we got to talk about this. This isn't okay anymore. Mm-hmm. And, and not just let it fester to the point of then all of a sudden one day you're just like, you're not sick, motherfucker, quit going to Omaha, you whore. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, and the same with me. I, we have a responsibility to be adult. <laughs> it's hard to say that sometimes in this lifestyle. Be adult and communicate that, hey, we're starting to feel uncomfortable with, with a certain rule. Mm-hmm. It's the same with communication. If you start to feel, look, at any point in time, if you come to me and you say, Hey, I really want to look at your phone. I, I, I know, you know, yeah, you told me that you've been texting uh, this person, but I want to see the text. I should not have a problem handing you the phone. No. Because if I have a problem handing you the phone, why? Why do I have a problem handing you the phone? You know? But I also think that you you or I in the, the role reversal, you know, I cracked a joke earlier about don't worry, I look at your phone when you go to the bathroom. Okay, I don't. I've got that other phone for that. No, I'm just kidding. I don't, but I, but. I just say you have access to my Facebook <laughs> constantly. I do? Wait, what? Oh, shut huh. up. But I, but I think by the same token, if, if, if one partner's sneaking around to try to find, I mean, that's like breaking the rules. Mm-hmm. If the rules you're okay with how that is with communication, and then I'm sneaking around trying to break that, or I'm trying to sneak around to find that without just asking you. That's the equivalent of me breaking the rules. Do you think? I mean, you've got this look on your face like, like, mm. I, would, do you, I mean, isn't it kind of? Shouldn't we be able to just say, hey, yeah, you've been texting me all I want. To, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> no, I was thinking about it. No, 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 no. No, I have another thought going into my head because we know a couple that he would always run off and play and it would make her mad. Uh-huh. And it took... Ugh. Several years before we went, um, I think they do that on purpose. That was their kink. That was their kink. Yeah, their, that was their kink. It was like they wanted to get around to make up sex. They want, yeah. Well, it took a while to figure that out, and it's just like, why every time we're around you, it has the same old flipping drama? Does he not catch on? <laughs> well, because the thing, what part of it? The problem was they were they were including us in their kink. Yeah, without telling us, I was us. not okay with that. Well, because they're saying every time they would. Well, set no, up, he wasn't having sex with me. No, no, no. But they would. <laughs> no, and, and nor I. But they would set up every time. Oh, we want to, you know, all of a sudden she would start contacting me. We want to hook up. We want to hook up. We want to hook up. And and would set it up every time. So it looked like the four of us were going to hook up. And then every time the same thing happened, it was like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. And and here's the thing, kids. Again, you know what? We don't kink shame. Whatever's cool uh, and whatever you're into, whatever your rules are, when you include innocent people. Gosh, at least let them know. Uh, yeah, you have it. Hey, look, you don't have a right to fuck up my night, okay? <laughs> and that's Three different times. You know, because they were in a track couple. That was going to be a win-win. Yeah. You do not have the right to fuck up our night because it gets you off. Okay, now without telling us, you need to allow us the option to know whether or not we want to play your, your, your little reindeer games mm-hmm. or not. Just, just saying. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, all right. So, we're both in agreement that, that transparency in the transparency in communication in terms of predetermined levels mm-hmm. is is what we what we vote for <laughs> like a game show a survey says that, pretty much well i mean the thing is again as long as if you have it predetermined that here's the deal you're not looking at my fucking phone that's between me and whoever and vice versa and we're okay with that when we, before it starts then no worries but you you have to have that has to be a very clear a very clear definition of that Mm -hmm. and and there needs to be a thing here's part of it swinging is supposed to be fun and as a couple whether you swing alone whether you guys play alone whether you play as a couple Mm -hmm. however you play it's still supposed to be fun and and as 
a couple or add someone to the snake other. Part of the fun is sharing in that. Even even if you're playing, you guys play alone, there's still supposed to be a thing of sharing and and an enjoyment out of that. So mm-hmm. if somebody feels like somebody else is either taking advantage of the rules, mm-hmm. uh, abusing the rules, or lying about the rules, then that's not fun. And at that point in time, that becomes crap. Mm-hmm. I hope that answered that question. It kind of did. Well, we share a lot of opinions, don't we? You're opinionated. <laughs> I'm talking about son of a bitch. That's part of the rule. And and understand again, these are just that's just what these are. These are our opinions, mm-hmm. right? So, but the one thing you will, I don't think you'll ever go wrong with. I feel 100 percent confident saying is communication, proper communication will never lead to bad things. Uh, proper communication. <laughs> I was like, going to say you have I worded to, that like the it. other person has to has to respond by listening. It's a yes. it's a given, you know. Both sides have to, you have you to, to compromise. You have to compromise and you have to keep asking until you know. Mm-hmm. Until you're 100% sure that you both understand. That can be tricky on on the communication because a lot of times you don't have control. You know, you don't have control if if some stalker is this type of person or creepers texting you every morning. Good morning, love you. You know, you you don't have control over that. I don't have control if somebody is texting me, you know, every day with, you know, what outfit outfit should I wear to work or whatever. We we don't have control over that. We can't you know, there's limits. You know, you can block them on Facebook, but you can't change your phone number every time something happens or whatever. Mm-hmm. So there's a degree of having to be understanding with your significant other when it comes to that because again it's not something that we ne- we can tell people to please stop we can tell people you know a million times but it doesn't mean it will and, and you don't have control over it. so you know remember you can't get all bent out of shape if all of a sudden uh your significant other is getting dick pics and she's not asking for them but she's getting dick pics you can't be pissed or going why do you have all these dick pics because dudes are needy and they send them I mean, it is what it is. You, you have some girls that send you just the same amount. Well, right, exactly. And, and as I was saying, vice versa, you can't be pissed if there's boot pics or cooter pictures on my phone no. because they send because we don't necessarily, we don't ask for them. It just happens. So you have to be understanding. You have to work with that. Okay, so this leads right into the, to the, the great part of the question. <laughs> A great question. This is from D. Uh, at what point does something become cheating? That, with that look, you've got to have something you want to say there. <laughs> are, are we having a rules review after this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> That's slippery. Yeah, it is slippery. It depends on your rules. It depends on, uh, yeah, it depends on your rules. It uh, That's going to be a case-by-case situation to a large degree yeah i mean okay so there's a crazy factor that gets involved with the whole thing too right <laughs> you're like okay i'm gonna let you hang yourself like, on where this are you? no 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 I, no well there is it's like okay obviously it depends on how you're playing if you're playing as a if you're playing as a as a as a couple if you're playing alone i mean Okay, you hear horror stories, we've heard horror stories, seen them, whatever, where you have two couples, they play together all the time, uh, they're good friends, blah, 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 and all of a sudden, either the guy or the gal out of that couple contacts the significant other accordingly, and it's like, hey, I really want to play this stuff, but I don't want anybody else to know, or... You know, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, we're friends, so it's okay, so... Mm, and it starts to go into a gray area. I mean, I mean, we've all we've we've seen and heard those type of things happening. We've mm-hmm. we've we've seen and heard. Uh, it's very easy to all of a sudden to if you're not careful get emotional attachment. I mean, that becomes that becomes a, <laughs> a dangerous game. Feel free, you can enter interject no, right wherever you want to on that one. <laughs> no, it, it it when <laughs> been there. Um, <laughs> when emotions get involved and you're not okay with it, yeah, that happens. But 
you also listen when I said you need to uh, cool it. Yes. And I <laughs> and here's what you're doing. Do you see this? <laughs> this is what she's doing. Do you see this? Yes. And, and that <laughs> Obviously, that leads to a personal story. Weird. Uh, yeah. So when we were when we were we were still pretty new in in the lifestyle. Uh, I'd say we'd probably I don't know we were probably been in it a little over a year, right around there, and we had our first uh, threesome with another chick, and uh, it was a gal that I worked with. So um, the challenge was is that the gal that I worked with was substantially younger than we were and what she wanted out of the what she wanted out of out of the whole situation was completely different from what we wanted out of the situation so what she wanted was she was jealous she wanted to have she wished she'd had a husband and all these different different things like like what miss amanda had so the problem became was that you know obviously this is my first experience with uh having a threesome and it was it was fucking awesome is what it was it was awesome but in in besides just being awesome it was also very easy to to get butterflied and to to not see that that she was actually uh shooting for something totally different she was manipulating the situation she was manipulating the friendship uh with you she was manipulating me and there started to be emotions going there and I didn't even see them coming at all. So that was a damn scary thing. That was a damn scary thing because when you finally brought it to my attention, it was like, Oh, wait a minute. And enough. So we vowed that that would never happen again. Mm -hmm. And, 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 but that's part of the learning curve. So was it cheating? No, and no. It, no, it never, it never got to that point, but it's very, it can happen to anybody. I mean, we have always had a super strong marriage and not everybody has the same intentions and shit. So, you know, that becomes, starts to become a real, a real gray area and you have to watch and you have to trust in your spouse. You have to. A number one, you have a responsibility to trust that your spouse is not cheating on you for first part, but you have to trust when your spouse comes to you and goes, Hey, wait a minute. I'm starting to see things that are not, not right. You know, you're, you're changing your behavior. You're altering your behavior. You have a responsibility to listen to that. Mm -hmm. Because what starts off as innocent fun and enjoyment can very quickly and very easily cross that line into cheating. Now, put a fucking asterisk by this shit. See, I love telling that personal story. And this is where Cole was a complete and total tool. Uh, anyways, so yeah, but, <laughs> yes, it, it happens, but we, we were, we were new. It was the first time we'd ex experienced anything like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know what? There's going to be a million follow-up questions. We're going to want to know what all those looks are for. Uh, the, the, the thing is, is that I lost my train of thought. Actually, that's kind of weird. It, well, I know what I was going. So every situation is different and it starts with who you're playing with okay everybody's definition of cheating is different very much so very much so I, it, yeah completely different so one you better be on the same fucking page as that shit because mm -hmm. that's really important and you better this is where okay here's the deal if your spouse is not comfortable not comfortable with you playing with somebody Okay, you, every couple usually has the, the no-fly list. Mm -hmm. the, the absolute, unequivocal mm -hmm. no. If you break that rule, that's fucking cheating in my opinion. Mm -hmm. That is straight up cheating. If you know, if you know that if you, as a guy, you go stick your dick in that girl and your significant other's already told you, don't touch that bitch, that is straight up cheating. Yeah. There's no way around that, okay? My thing, I would take it a step further. Now, is if, if if you have somebody that is the iffy list, because we all got the iffy list. Admit it. Admit it. No, no, don't even chug your sit all fucking quiet. We all have the iffy list. You have a list of girls just like I have a list of guys that I'm like, eh, uh -huh, yeah, exactly. 
and, and maybe, okay, maybe those people will eventually make it on the go have fun list. Maybe it's because, you know, you got to get to know her better. Or I got to get to know him better. Or we need to play as a couple first or whatever the case may be. If they're on the iffy list, iffy list leads to feeling like cheating. Pretty, can, can pretty damn quick. It can. It just depends. It means you have some sort of re, reservation. Reason, yeah. So if you have a reservation, if there's a specific girl and you have a reservation about that person, and conveniently enough, the only time I'm around that person is when you're not there. How convenient. <laughs> and look, our mind wanders, right? <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be the same. It's gonna be the same thing. If there's a guy that the only time he's talking to you is when I'm conveniently not there, or when I'm tied, you know, tied not tied up. <laughs> uh, when I'm when I'm you know preoccupied, right? It's auto get automatically gonna lead to suspicion, and here becomes the challenge. When something is suspicious, again, it goes back to communication, but it goes back to effective communication, mm-hmm. right? Because I know that that's an area where I will fall. I sometimes, I sometimes fail. Is that on? I have a message that I want to get out, but my delivery might be a scotch off, just just a little bit off. So uh, if it's somebody that's iffy, I'm more apt to go instead of going, "Hey, we need to." We need to talk about this. I'm more apt to go, what the fuck? How come every fucking time I'm gone, that's when the son of a bitch talking to you? Motherfuckers can ring around. Right? Okay, so at which point in time, your response is going to be, what the fuck? Don't you fucking trust me? Jesus Christ, you think I would do that? Okay. Mm-hmm. And then it goes from a discussion to all hell breaks loose. Mm-hmm. Then people end up on the no fly list. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and it's probably not justified. But... If you know that someone is in that iffy category, that iffy list, me personally, I would say if you're communicating with that person, you make sure your significant other sees everything that's being communicated Mm -hmm. back and forth. I would personally say, hey, you know what? I've got to go to this function. I got to go to a doctor's appointment. This person wants to go to lunch. Are you okay with that? You know, and... Then when you leave lunch, you need to text your neighbor and say, hey, we're done with lunch. It, it's keeping, if you keep your significant other in the loop all the way around on that type of a situation, mm-hmm. you're going to avoid a whole lot of misunderstandings about what is or is not cheating. Mm-hmm. Because once the suspicion of cheating, once that goes into the human mind, I don't care if you're a guy, I don't care if you're a woman, it doesn't matter. Once you get that little that little itch... Scratching the back of your brain, going there, fucking around on the side. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. It is. Your mind's gonna play games. I, yeah, and, and and it's damn near impossible to get rid of. Mm-hmm. I mean, it it takes a long, long time to actually take and and approach it from a more rational, a more rational look, and to actually understand and actually take a look at it, and to see. Mm-hmm. Now, you're agreeing a lot with me. That's why I'm glad we have these things on tape. <laughs> so, okay, so with that being said, again, remember, here's the deal. None of us can read fucking minds. No. Uh, although you're very close, dear. Uh, that, <laughs> yeah, that's, how, that's kind of the bond we have. You're so close. <laughs> okay, none of us can actually read minds. So if you have a problem with someone that your significant other is chatting with, or you have a gut feel, or if you have a random hair up your ass, it doesn't matter. If you don't communicate that to your significant other, they're not going to know. And then what happens is it's going to fester. And remember that big, ugly, pus sore that we talked about earlier? <laughs> Guess what? That motherfucker is 20 times bigger now, okay? And, and, and it becomes a huge, soupy, swampy mess. <laughs> Okay. Oh, it, it, is, it is what it is. Well, that's what, when you start talking cheating, that's what it is. At that point in time, when somebody thinks that they're being cheated on, their brain becomes a complete swamp mess of anger, hatred, and fire. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just, it, it, it is, it is what it is. So if you want that faster, okay, you do not have a right to not say anything for fucking three weeks or four weeks as this little, you know, torrid setup getting horny to go fucking hook up or whatever is headed towards that 
screaming down the rails to, to that point, and then right before it happened, go, you motherfucker, and lose your shit and go, I haven't agreed with this since the very beginning. What the <laughs> fuck? Why did you not know? Why didn't I know? Because you did not tell me. Now, we've been fortunate. We haven't had that. No. I mean, we, we, haven't, we haven't had that. So, you know, and, and we'll always keep it that way. Again, just keep reading my mind there. <laughs> ah. Good grief. <laughs> all right. And remember, well, all we want to do is stay out of that swampy, soupy mess. All right, everybody. Well, I'll tell you what. We are coming to the close uh, of another one of our shows. We are so excited to have you listen. And I uh, want to take a quick second here to, again, thank our sponsors for the show. Uh, thank the first half sponsor. That would be, thank the folks at swingtowns.com. Register today for a free account at that's www.swingtowns.com. Make sure you put that you were referred by the crazy truth. And we also want to thank the American Dream. Again, always one hell of a party, 7402 F Street in Omaha, Nebraska. Guys, don't forget to follow us uh, on all kinds of social media. We are everywhere. Follow us on our Facebook page, Crazy Truth. That's K-R-A-Z-Y Truth. Also, you can follow us on YouTube on our Casba channel, K-A-S-B-H. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter. Yeah, I fucked that up when I made it. That would be at Truth Crazy. Keeping it real, kids. <laughs> at Truth Crazy. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, and, you know, if you like what our, you like our podcast, you like what we're doing, uh, feel free to support us on uh, our Patreon. That's www.patreon.com backslash crazy, capital K, R-A-Z-Y, CASBA, capital K, A-S-B-H. <sighs> or don't forget to send us an email. I've just been reminded. If you have other questions for the next couple of shows, uh, don't forget to send us an email. That is uh, crazy.casba at gmail.com. So... Doing it the only way I know how and the only way I want to. Till next time, Casma Style out. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>